Thank you. You're welcome. Bamel places a gentle hand on my shoulder. Ooh. Nod seriously, place my hand over his. Hmm, that's a little bit of romance, and I think we need some romance in this. Yeah. I feel Bamel start as I reproach his touch, but just as quickly his smile replaces his shock. The moment is pleasant, a small balm against a large burn. I harden my expression and Bamel follows suit. He moves his free arm down. I fully link his arm with mine and now properly settle look forward. Margaret is following the guide with some reluctance, turning back every so often to check on us. I wave my lantern to signal that we're catching up. Margaret returns her head to the front and quickens her pace. With a tug on Bamel, we start to follow them. Ooh, I don't like that. The four of us continue cautiously over the bridge, only this time the wet, squishing footsteps of the prowler join the sound of our own. In spite of myself, I grip Bamel tighter. The prowler walks without a set pattern, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. It takes long steps, then short ones. At times, it stops walking entirely. Does it hurt to be out of the water like this, or is it trying to be difficult to read? Suddenly, the whispering in the lake grows louder. I steel myself, try not to let it get to me. The most important thing in a situation like this is to remain calm. I can't lose my head. Then, all at once, I notice the guide and Margaret have come to a halt. Bemily, they're stopping. Oh, it's Bemily, isn't it? Not, not Bemel. Oh, well. He's known as Bemel to me now. Bemel slows down as I do, and as we hear Margaret's back, she says... She says with something akin to distress. There's another one. <laughs> and another one. I took on Bamel and he understands. We draw up close to Margaret, ready to protect her if need be. But the guide hold, holds out a hand. Don't get any closer. Just over his shoulder, I see another prowler stumbling towards us. White liquid dripping from its eyes. Mmm. White liquid, eh? Mmm. The guide's hand turns over in the air, palm up. Give me a lantern. We'll throw it. Margaret ascends her own with a trembling hand when Bamel speaks instead. His back is still turned. If you have to take someone's, take mine. Nah. Yes, an extra light won't do as much good when we're standing this close together. Oh, right, true. Margaret takes Bamel's lantern from him. Guarded relief displayed on her features. Just give me a sec, guys. And um, Something popped up and I just want to make sure that we're all still recorded. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Margaret. She hands the lantern to the guide, whose hand grips it tightly, knuckles growing pale. Stay here. I can't throw it too far. The light will blow out before it reaches the Nyx. He steps closer to the monster, his movements light and confident. As he nears, the prowler starts to back away. Is it only the approaching light that's making it retreat, or are they afraid of him? The guide is far away from us that the fog is partially obscuring him, hiding his movements. The voices from the lake grew louder and louder. Water suddenly begins to splash across the lake in the distance and onto the edges of the bridge. They want him to mess up. Then suddenly the guide takes multiple long, long and fast strides forward, throws the lantern and jumps backwards to regain the lost distance. There's a sharp hiss and then a deep splash and the voices of the Nixie grow quieter. Not silent, but quieter. A sigh escapes me and the guide comes back to our group. We should keep going, before it comes back. I glance at Bamel and realise he too is looking relieved at the guide before us. And then I see it. Oh, got me another brew. Nice. The first prowler? It's still there. It's right there. Ooh, that looks kind of creepy, doesn't it? Pull the male forward. I shift around, pulling the male behind me. The prowler lunges after him, barely missing the male, but striking my lantern instead. The fire goes out, and the two of us are plunged into an unearthly darkness. There's a slick splash. I realise the Nyx has retreated into the water. Somehow, the male and I are still standing. We're still here. Kika, thank you. I wonder if Bemel Bemele would have died. 
in that uh, that choice there. I can't respond. Something cold and wet and slimy has grabbed my ankle. Oh no, we're gonna die. Kick it off. I kick my leg out as fast as I can, and the nicks and the nicks hold slips. It can't pull with the m momentum I've gained against it. Margaret rushes to my side, her lantern hanging out towards the Nyx. The light brushes its face. We see it for an instant, its eyes wide, and then it slides back into the smooth surface of the water. So I wonder if, when, on the first first playthrough, when we went around the lake, Margaret died. Spoilers. I wonder if this was the encounter in which she died. So soon. But Mel grabs Margaret and I both, helping us towards the centre of the bridge and crossing, un crossing under its breath. Under, under his I only looked away for one second. It's fine, Bamelo. We're all fine. <sighs> Are you actually all right? Margaret cocks her head down, examining my ankle. There's nothing but a wet smudge around my trousers. I am fine. We're sound, we're fine. I say that, though... I don't actually actually want to let go of the mill. I need to in order to relight our lantern and provide us actual safety. But I feel such a strong desire not to be alone in this moment. I shake my head roughly and let go of him, relighting the lantern as fast as I'm able. Kika, thank you. Again. You saved my life. I won't let this happen again. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yes. Yes. It would be good for all of us to pay more attention. Margaret nods solemnly. Suddenly it seems like we're all on the same side. It isn't only Pamela and I. She's with us, more than simply a presence. The guide's voice, as cold as that monster's gra grasp, ends my train of thought. We lost the lantern I threw. The Nyx grabbed it after the light went out. Margaret makes a noise. I glance over, wondering whether she's, she's upset. But there's a small smile on her face instead. It's better than them taking anything else. True, true. A nervous laugh bubbles up out of me and just just as quickly stops. But Mel chuckles in response and our collective tension eases up, the adrenaline draining from our bodies. We need to keep walking. The guide starts on the bridge again and we join him. I try to clamp down on the relief, the ease that wants to flood my, flood my head. It's not over. The prowler is gone, but so is B B Mel's land. You can stay near me, Bemele. Since... Your lantern is lost. I... I appreciate it. Now it goes on ahead of us. But Mel stays by my side as I keep at the end of the line. The breath of release from Margaret and Bemele is quickly swallowed by the sombre atmosphere of Sinalos as well. Replaced by the gravity of the near-death experience. Never mind celebrating his survival. Something like that shouldn't have happened in the first place. The memory of the prowlers, so the prowlers reaching out towards us appears every time I close my eyes. Well, why are you close, closing your eyes? Why does Don't it look do that? like something's dripping down their faces? Hmm. I've got one, one suggestion. The prowlers are on Margaret's mind too. Looking at her pained expression, it's as though the moment of relief never existed at all. I'm not sure. Me neither. Something's wrong with them, though. They live in water. Air shouldn't be good for the things, but they want to drown humans so much they're willing to drag themselves around on land? It's not right. Of course it isn't. They are monsters. They likely do not understand even the concept of right and wrong. Well, I don't disagree that there's something very wrong about them. I truly, truly hope that's the last we'll see of the Prowlers. Highly doubt it. Something comes to her mind, causing Margaret to end her part of the conversation early. You. Uh, since you two have to share a light, wouldn't it be safer to be in the middle? Margaret stops and wait for Bermelay and I to reach her position. That way, you'll catch the edges of my light and the guides, and it won't be so dangerous if Bermelay loses his position momentarily. That's a pretty smart idea, That's actually. a very kind offer, Margaret. Emily's surprise is so apparent, I want to cover his face with my hands to stop him from insulting her. She merely smirks. I think Margaret may be surprised with herself, too. 
Ben Molly returns to his usual short. As thoughtful as it is, I, at least, am fine with bringing up the rear. I'm used to keeping watch for monsters, and since there are two of us, I can pay attention to the back while Kika focuses ahead. It's not my light, though, so I shouldn't be the one to decide what she should do with it. Margaret and Emily turn to me in unison. Seems like it's my decision. Oh, okay, I don't want this to be a timed one. Um, okay, so if we stay at the back... <sighs> so it's basically a... Do we stay at the back to watch the other safety? Or do we go in the middle to look out for our own safety? Basically. Because with Margaret at the back, she's going to have to watch the rear, but that would be better for us to do because there's two of us. And if something grabs her, then she can't defend herself, whereas we can. Neither of them are wrong. As for me, my goal is to protect everyone. I can't very well do that with Margaret following behind us. But being stuck in the middle of the group could also be dangerous depending on what circumstances we come across. Getting pincered by the enemy would, al would be almost certain death, no matter how experienced Bermelay and I are. I just don't know what to expect from this bridge, and that makes things so much more difficult. Oh no. Uh, we'll stay as we are. So you're staying behind? Yes. Seems like it. Yes, I think we'll be good here. But really, thank you. That was a very kind offer. Well, all right. Margaret respects our decision and trots ahead a bit to catch up with the guide. He has paid no mind to the entire affair. So, I don't want to sound like a child, but... How much longer until we arrive at the halfway point? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Margaret trickles, reflecting the amusement I don't want to vocalise. Hmm? Oh god, okay, no. We still have some ways to go. Damn. God damn it. I suppress my laughter yet again at his pouting response. The gloom we've been under dissipates slightly, the, uh, like like light flickering through the fog. The first trial tends to be the most difficult. I believe we will only react better from this point on. All right, Margaret, pipe down. I like the way you think. Then a gleam enters Bermelay's eyes, and he grins. I think Kika deserves a round of applause. Her quick reflexes are owed the utmost appreciation. Right, don't start clapping in the middle of it. He leans softly into my shoulder, trying to get me to... What? It was indeed a sight. You're quite capable. Bemele was also a sight, but for very different reasons. The way he froze with his mouth all agape was a laugh in itself. <laughs> Bemele shakes a fist at Margaret in mock anger, and shoots me an affectionate look. You should know, she and I are usually on equal footing. The only reason you had footing at all is because she pulled you back. Wait, Marcus got the bounce. Burn, do you want some ice for that? Bemily laughs self-consciously, scratching his head. That's very true. You can always count on Kika. Kika, Kika. I keep my eyes steadily ahead, unsure how I should respond. I'm pleased, almost grateful to hear what they think of me. But I don't know what I could say that wouldn't seem pathetic. Instead, I contribute the best way I can. I keep my focus on the path ahead of us. Without a response from me, the conversation quickly dies out. Still, it eases my heart to your such friendly terms with my companions. After some time, I notice Margaret isn't keeping up with the guide as much as she was before. I realise it's because the guide has increased his pace. Margaret begins to jog in an effort to keep up with him, and Bemele and I do the same. Despite this, the guy keeps getting further away. Hey, slow down! We go faster and faster until so suddenly we're full on sprinting across the slick wooden boards. That's not safe. Figures in the dark 
fog fly past us at a blur, and it occurs to me that the branching paths in the bridge appear to be sinking. Go faster. I try hard to swallow my rising panic. The guide shouts something, but it's drowned out by the frantic pounding of our footsteps. 